During other segments of this training, you have learned that oil spills can be prevented by working to eliminate operator error, improving operational practices, and regular equipment maintenance. However, as the saying goes, spills happen. As the operator of a bulk fuel facility, you are obligated by law not only to know how to respond, but also to have the materials necessary to respond to potential spills from your operations. This is necessary not only to protect your land and water, but also to ensure the safety of local residents. Therefore, I want to briefly discuss two things. First, some of the regulatory requirements related to spill prevention and response, and secondly, some of the initial actions that should be taken if there is an oil spill in your community. Regarding the regulations, most village tank farms are subject to requirements of the U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. The State of Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation also has tank farm regulations, but they apply only to large facilities with over 420,000 gallons of storage capacity. The reason both the Coast Guard and EPA regulate and may inspect your facility is because the Coast Guard jurisdiction or responsibility covers just vessels and marine operations, including the barge delivery pipeline to your facility, but not the storage tanks. It's the EPA that regulates facility storage tanks, piping, and fuel distribution. I know at times it can be confusing, especially when you consider that village tank farms are subject to basically the same requirements as the large petroleum terminals in Cook Inlet and Valdez. But, speaking from experience, I can say the people in the agencies are there to assist you in preventing spills. They are a good source of information and will work with you. However, tank farm operators who mislead or lie to the agencies or knowingly violate the regulations may be subject to penalties. Most of the Coast Guard and EPA spill prevention regulations that apply to your facility are addressed in a binder that looks like this. It contains three required plans that were prepared specifically for your facility. A Coast Guard operations manual, it explains how the facility complies with the requirements pertaining to barge delivery. An EPA spill prevention control and countermeasure plan, or SPCC, it describes how the facility complies with EPA regulations pertaining to oil storage and transfer operations, and a facility response plan that addresses what to do if there is a spill, and it demonstrates to the Coast Guard and EPA that the facility has done adequate planning, training, and has access to the necessary resources to respond to potential spills. These plans were prepared as part of your bulk fuel upgrade project. They have been submitted to the Coast Guard and EPA for review and approval, as required. It is a violation to operate a bulk fuel facility without these plans. It is your responsibility to periodically review the plans and update them when necessary. When the agencies inspect your facility, they will ask to see them. If you cannot find the plans, or if you are not familiar with them, you may have to rewrite and resubmit them, something you really don't want to have to do. I know the plans are somewhat long and redundant, and they are written to satisfy federal regulations that sometimes don't consider the realities of living in rural Alaska, but they are a good source of information about operating requirements applicable to your facility. Briefly, here's what each plan addresses and some of the things you should be familiar with. The Coast Guard Operations Manual spells out the barge delivery procedures. It identifies the facility operators who will be involved in the delivery and their duties. It describes some of the Coast Guard requirements, including both the barge and the shoreside facility must designate a person in charge who is responsible for a spill-free delivery and who will be on site during the entire transfer. Before the transfer, both the barge and facility persons in charge must meet to discuss and sign a Declaration of Inspection, or DOI. The DOI is a checklist form the barge provides that confirms all operators understand and agree to the specific transfer procedures. The facility should keep a signed copy of the DOI. There must be continuous radio communication between the barge and facility during the entire delivery. Constant radio communication is necessary in order to immediately stop the transfer in the event of an emergency. 
Pumping must begin slowly. Only after confirmation there are no leaks and that product is being properly delivered should transfer volume be increased. Topping off procedure must also be at reduced rates and follow the procedures discussed in the pre-transfer meeting. The marine delivery pipelines are to be pressure tested annually. A large drip pan must be placed under the header during delivery and warning and no smoking signs must be posted. The SPCC plan covers EPA requirements pertaining to your storage tanks, piping and fuel distribution, including the person responsible for facility operations must conduct and document a monthly visual inspection of the entire facility fuel system. The SPCC plan lists the other required inspection, testing, and record keeping requirements. All storage tanks must have secondary containment, such as a diked impound to contain a spill if a tank leaks or is overfilled. Double wall tanks can meet the secondary containment requirements only if they have certain overfill prevention devices. Tank and pipeline valves that allow outward flow of oil must be closed and locked at all times except when fuel is being transferred. Storage facilities must be fenced and lighted. Warning signs must be posted. There must be written procedures for all fuel transfers. Facility personnel must be trained in tank farm operations at the start of employment and at least annually thereafter. The facility response plan outlines oil spill response actions specific to your facility. It lists oil spill notification and agency reporting requirements and phone numbers. It identifies potential spills at your facility. How much oil might be spilled, where it might go, containment and recovery actions, what sensitive areas could be impacted, and safety considerations. It describes and illustrates spill cleanup techniques. It identifies facility and local spill response equipment. It establishes the facility spill response organization and lists by name the members of the facility or community emergency response team and their duties. It lists spill training and drill requirements and record keeping requirements.